guess what I'd like to do this evening is very briefly give you a little bit of context for the art of science learning and then tell you a little bit about what we've done and where we're going with it. Um, so in, you've heard uh, in, in, in the introduction some of the things that I've done with arts-based learning and business, but actually uh, I come to all of this very much as an artist. Um, I'm a musician. I learned to read music before English. In college I started hanging out with a rough crowd, so I did theater. And much of my career has been running arts organizations. Uh, and it was as the director of a conductorless orchestra, Orpheus Chamber Orchestra, that I first um, began to, 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 to become really fascinated with what you could learn from creative processes, from the arts, that would relate to things far beyond the realm of the arts, or far seemingly beyond the realm of the arts. And we began working during my years with Orpheus with that conductorless process as a model of collaborative management, and high performance teamwork. And um, eventually, I started working more broadly with different art forms uh, and thinking about what could we learn from those skills and processes and experiences? What kinds of human endeavors could we apply them to? And what might the outcomes be? And partnered with Americans for the Arts and formed Creativity Connection. While I was uh, at Creativity Connection, uh, we uh, got involved with a study that, that the conference board was doing called Ready to Work. This was a really interesting study because what they did is they surveyed 400 CEOs across the country and basically asked them two questions. The first question is, what do you consider to be the critical skills for success in a 21st century innovative workforce? The second question is, how would you assess the skill level of the people coming to your company from colleges and universities in those areas? And you can see what the outcomes were. Uh, those, those robust blue bars tell us that corporate leaders uh, feel that communication, collaboration, and creativity are at the center, at the very center of success in an innovative workforce. Those anemic looking red bars tell us what the corporate leaders feel about the level of preparedness that people that are coming to their companies are showing. So we began calling that the innovation gap, and we began doing a lot of work around that and uh, with, with Creativity Connection, I had the wonderful opportunity to, to, to collaborate with a remarkable group of artists that were, that were functioning as teaching artists in very unusual contexts with some of the world's leading corporations and thought and opinion leaders in, 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 in different realms. One of them is here this evening, Todd Seiler, and I'll let him speak for himself. But, but, but uh, Todd and I had the opportunity, along with another artist that was part of that, Liz Lerman, the choreographer, to, to do some work at the National Science Foundation, begin to introduce some of these concepts. And growing out of all of that, uh, there were a lot of interesting initiatives. One of them was the art of science learning. What we thought that we might do is essentially bring together a lot of different people and try to build a community of practice around what we could learn from, from the arts and how we might use those learnings in science education, in fostering the development of an innovative and creative 21st century workforce and interest in science in the public. And so we did these three conferences earlier this year. The first one of them here in Washington at the Smithsonian, followed in pretty rapid succession by one at IIT in Chicago and wrapping up this summer or late spring in Cal IT2 in San Diego. Um, what you see, I think, gives a pretty good flavor of a key element of, 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 of these conferences. They were extraordinarily hands-on, sleeves rolled up, experiential. What we did is we brought together about 425 people coming from some remarkably different perspectives and backgrounds. We had uh, scientists and teaching artists. We had classroom teachers and corporate leaders. We had policy makers and, 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 and academic researchers. And all brought together in one way or another around their, their, their interest in this art science connection at, at, the, the, at this point of potential for learning and the impact on innovation. And uh, one of our key purposes here was pure community building. And so we felt that if we could actually get a lot of people together that, and we could get over sort of the fact that they're coming from different places and not used to talking to one another and speaking different languages, that they might discover that they would have a lot to say to one another. And in fact, they did. And so we began quickly moving into the realm of collaborations. But we wanted to do more than pure community building. We were also eager to explore the whole area of research 
and ultimately create resources for the field in the form of a knowledge base and in helping to connect some of the dots for corporate leaders between the role that the arts could play and how that might, that might relate to, to critical corporate objectives around innovation. So to start uh, with the research, we, we brought together some, somewhere on 80 or 90 uh, researchers in, in, in different disciplines, but that were looking at, at, at these, these, these areas. And we surfaced some interesting things. I'm going to share a few of them very briefly with you. So first of all, there's this study. This, this is a little very quick one-minute tour of what we know about what we actually know from the research and what we don't know about what arts-based learning brings to science education. So we know that students who study the arts outperform students who don't on their SATs. We have really good data for that. It goes back a decade. It's sustained. Uh, it doesn't tell us anything more than that. It just tells us that there's this, these two interesting facts. And there are all kinds of possible reasons for it, but, but there it is. OK. Second, we have this, this, this wonderful work that Robert Ruth Bernstein did uh, looking at high-achieving scientists against a general population of scientists, against the general population as a whole, and discovering that, for example, Nobel laureates are 22 times more likely to be uh, involved in the performing arts as actual performers than scientists who aren't Nobel laureates. Again, it's a correlation. It doesn't prove us that, that one causes the other, but it's some fairly powerful, suggestive, compelling evidence. OK, now we get to some actual causation. We know that studying the performing arts helps engineers become better communicators. We know this because Cooper Union has tried this experiment for 20 years. They've deeply integrated dance, theater, and music into engineering education to produce engineers who could communicate more effectively and intelligibly with a non-engineering public. And being engineers, they carefully measure their outcomes. And the data is right there. And finally, we know that there's more to creativity than problem solving, but there seems to be some real disconnects around how these, these, these concepts are, 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 are thought of and referred to. So uh, a follow-on study to the one I referred to earlier called Ready to Innovate surveyed school superintendents and then the business leaders again. The school superintendents tended to view creativity as a problem-solving exercise. So if we could do a better job of educating and training problem solvers, presto, we'll, 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 we'll have solved the problem of a creative workforce. The business leaders say, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's actually, from our perspective, the least important of the various skills that you're talking about. What we need are problem identifiers, people who can think about what isn't and what might be and imagine and envision a different world. So these are some of the things that we, we actually know about the relationship between arts-based learning, science education, and innovation. They're interesting individual pieces. There's also not much there. There's a great deal that we don't know. In point of fact, many of the things that, that, that those of us who've worked in this field for, for a long time feel powerfully from our own experience. Nevertheless, we don't really have data that, 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 that backs them up. So that is a key sort of takeaway. We sense that going into the conferences, feel it even more strongly coming out of them, that there's a lot of work to be done in this realm. Finally, we did, um, we did as I said, it was a hands-on and experiential kind of conference. Todd led some, some extraordinary metaforming workshops, which perhaps he'll, he'll refer to a little bit in, in, in his remarks. And then growing out of those, we did some idea harvesting ones to help uh, collect some of the different ideas that had surfaced. Uh, we don't really have time to go into them. There were hundreds of them. Um, if you want to see all 135 pages of raw data or a more condensed outcome report, uh, just to give a sense of the richness of what this community brought, please visit the Art of Science Learning website, artofsciencelearning.org, and it's, it's all there and available. But what that did is it really kind of launched us into the working groups. With each conference, we went a little further. And in San Diego, we kind of had some spontaneous combustion. Uh, the working groups suddenly ignited. They took hold, and they decided, OK, these have been fascinating discussions. Now, what are we going to do? How do we build on this? And, and the first thing they said is, we'll build on it by keeping meetings. So, Long after the conference is over, there are monthly meetings going on in, in Balboa Park of these working groups that have now grown to more than 100 people each that are coming up with all sorts of fantastic ideas and great energy that's growing out of it. And so all of this kind of led us to be thinking of, OK, what can we do here? So the point of departure in thinking about phase two was really very simple. 
in a day and a half, we took people on an incredible arc through these art of science learning conferences. We know that because the interim evaluation that did some fairly subtle analysis of, of language that people use to describe the art science connection and art based learning going into the conferences and what they were saying a day and a half later coming out of the conferences, there were some fairly dramatic shifts in precisely the directions that we would hope to achieve. So we, we, and we felt viscerally something powerful had happened there. The question became, okay, if we could do this in a day and a half, what would happen if we worked with people over a year and a half? What could we build that would be powerful and sustain and have deeper and, and greater impact? Well, growing out of what we learned out of these conferences, we felt that there was a, 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 a tremendous potential to spark innovation in informal science education through the arts and through arts-based learning. We felt that we had opportunities to, to, to work on fostering creativity in STEM learners uh, it, 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 through real life innovation challenges and to, to work with learners at different ages and see better how that works and what works and what doesn't work. We felt that we could broadly engage the community through exhibitions, through medias, through experiential learning opportunities and find different ways to, 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 to use the power of the arts to engage the public in science. And finally, we felt that we could take a, a crack at providing some real evidence about the impact of arts-based learning on innovation, STEM, uh, workforce development. So with that in mind, we went back to the idea harvest reports to think about, okay, so now how do we actually achieve all of these things? What is it that we can do? And what we decided to do was we kind of drew a box, okay? The, the idea harvest reports talked about and we felt powerfully in the conference about the importance of both community and collaborative framework and knowledge base. We felt that, that, that advancing the research agenda was critical. We felt that, that we needed to, to find ways to actually nurture these collaborations because people were hungry for them and it, they're not necessarily easy or intuitively obvious how we'll achieve them. And we wanted to find a way to increase the, the, the visibility of, of, of our field and what it is that we're trying to do. And so in thinking about that, and in thinking about this whole idea of bringing people together for a prolonged period uh, of, of almost gestation for new possibilities in the creative intersection of art and science and learning, we hit on the idea of incubators. And so we decided to attempt to create a set of arts-based incubators for STEM innovation. And that's basically the second phase, which is now very much on the drawing board, and it's, it's we have a long way to go uh, to get it funded, to get it, to get it worked through, and then to begin to do it hopefully next year. But uh, that's the direction that we've, we've taken growing out of these conferences. So I could go on uh, at, at great length, but obviously we don't really have the time to do it. I'll just mention briefly that at the core of these incubators, in addition to, to all the things that they will actually do, they'll also test. And this is the hypothesis that we hope to test. And these are some of the methods that we're looking at testing. OK, I think that's probably a good stopping point. Uh, and I would just encourage all of you who were part of the conference in Washington or weren't but are interested in what's happening and would like to be part of what's happening going forward, please visit the Art of Science Learning website. Uh, let me know. Uh, check in with us. Uh, there are working groups and that are just forming or that have already formed and that are doing their work. We'd love to have your voice and your contribution as part of that. Thanks.